Hello and welcome back to another part of design your own level tutorial. In the previous video, what we did is we added our window areas over here. And there's just a few things that I want to cover as what we did is because we used BSP brushes, we removed our texture that you can see on this wall over here. And now we don't have anything um, currently set for this. So we essentially want this texture on these walls, but it's a slightly different process. And then also I want to cover the glass material that we created and then just show you a little bit of um, how the reflection volumes work. And then also last thing I wanted to cover is, well, let's, we can actually cover this first. What I basically did uh, when we exported our model in the previous video, what happened was we, um, the, these sides that we have over here, they exported as smooth shaded, so they kind of looked a little bit funny. So I just like enabled flat shading. So if you look, smooth shading gave it like smooth corners, but the sides didn't look all that great with a reflective material. So um, I set that to flat shading and then everything worked the way I wanted it to. Then also regarding the glass material that we're just quickly going to cover, as you as we did in the previous video, we created this single material or we duplicated one of our old glass materials and we stacked it on and we made it double sided. And we had some overlapping issues here, but with the model being like slightly moved forward, I moved this layer a little bit backwards and you can't see that overlapping on the wall. So that actually looked pretty good to me for, so for what we need to, to do in um, this level, I'm not really going to worry too much about the glass material on this full plane causing any distortion. I will, however, show you how to just um, create a separate object with a glass material. So, but the other thing I wanted to cover with the glass material is if you look at it from here and you can see there's a reflection on it, but it reflects very odd. It seems to be reflecting the inside on the outside or it's just like blurring the inside. The reason for that is, is the reflection volumes. Now you can actually see that if I start moving this around, the outside moves. Now essentially what this is, is this says to the engine what to draw and where to draw it. So if you have a reflection volume over there, the outside of this is actually going to reflect everything that that volume sees. As you can see, if we actually zoom out, you can see like its radius and everything. I made it fairly large. But in order for us to actually get the reflection from the outside, and we can quickly test that, I'm just going to like take this chair. Sorry, no, my view is like set to super fast. And I'm just going to copy the chair outside and then just put it on like some random location. Okay, just work with me, there we go. And then I'm going to type in reflect and you'll see that there is the sphere reflection capture and I'm going to drag it in and then move it up. And then you'll start to see the reflection updates and changes. And if I move it a little bit more, you can see that there slightly, I'm not too sure if it will come through on the YouTube video, but over there is the reflection for our chair. So that is how you get the reflection to look right uh, on the outside of uh, your glass material or any object that you place over there. Okay, so that essentially is how we going to cover that that's all that i'm really going to cover the glass material what i wanted to show is if you want to make the material like a individual per model what you can do is select these corners on your models or on your models and hit f to fill and then again previous uh video we covered this we're going to hit u and i'm going to hit project view from uh with bounds. The reason why I'm doing that is I want a square shape and then I'm just going to select everything so that we can see what our UV map looks like. And then uh, select that corner, hit control L, you know, scale this in. And then over there, there is like our new side that we've created. And I think it's not really going to matter if it's inside or outside. 
because it's uh, just a flat flat surface so it doesn't need to be two-sided inside of blender because we're going to sort that out inside of unreal then what we're going to do is remember that we already have two materials assigned to this so what we're going to do now is actually assign a third material so we're going to hit plus new and then just assign and we're not really going to give it a name or anything like that i'm going to hit export and we'll just call this uh, window glass dot fbx and then all our settings selected objects edge and disable the leaf button click export jump back over to unreal and this time I'm going to hit, uh, go to the models, hit import, and there we go, import. And now you'll see, essentially, it looks the same, but if we go to the other side, you'll see that it's got that panel that we created. But now if we go into the model, you'll see that, here we go, it's got three different materials. So we're going to go over to the materials. And let's just view this from the front so we can immediately see the changes. I'm going to just use the couch legs material and then just assign it. Okay, we got those two right. Then I'm going to go to the glass one that we created and assign it to that one. Click save and wait for it to update. So now you'll see that it's got its own individual glass. And that was a fairly easy setup and it should be uh, exactly the same process for each one of the other models so you can do that quickly if you want your glass to be reflective on its own the reason why it's so bright is actually because it's in the sunlight at the current moment if i move the standard glass panel you'll see that it will also turn that bright so if you want each one of your window uh, borders or your uh, panels to have its own glass then uh, remember go to blender just fill that face Unwrap it separately and assign a different material to it, and then you're all set to go. Now, once again, remember I said that I am using like this different material setup, um, mainly for testing purposes in the beginning. Uh, later on, we're going to cover texture masking, which would be a more efficient way of doing this. But for now, all of this works perfectly, so I'm quite happy with it. Okay, so. I was very happy with the couch leg material that we used on this, but I wanted this to break up a little bit because once I applied this black one here, it's a little bit too reflective. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate the couch legs and I'll call this the, uh, let's just rename, window frame. And I'm going to open it. Then essentially all I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with the color and make it much dark. I don't want a pitch black, but fairly dark. So we'll go for something like that. I'm going to click OK. Click Save. And now if we drag this off, you'll see that it will still be reflective, but not as much. And that looks a little bit better because if you have too much reflection on most of your models, then things might just start looking a little bit weird. You might see a lot more artifacting because screen space reflections is, it, it's not perfect. Uh, I already explained before regarding the fall off that it has and things might just start to look a little bit weird so i'm just quickly going to apply this to all of these i could have just gone into the models and applied them separately or applied them all in one go but this way you can just like see the updates that are done on the fly all right so now we've covered the glass how to make the glass panel separate on this model actually let's put the black window frame on here so you can actually see that that looks much much better okay and uh, we've covered reflections on how that works and now quickly what i want to do is i just want to put our wall material onto this now remember what i said is that i'm going to replace all of these normal 
um, static meshes that we created before because I just dragged them off from normal uh, box meshes. I'm going to replace them with BSP brushes. So we already set up our concrete material before. But one thing that we did is we set up texture coordinates. Now texture coordinates is now more relevant for static meshes. And I'll, I'll quickly just apply it. What we can do is we literally can just drag it onto the wall. There we go. There we go. And immediately it looks pretty good. But you're going to see a little bit of stretching and things over here. So ignoring these walls which we are going to replace with bsp brushes what i'm going to do is i'm just going to let's just quickly delete that away from there i'm going to go into the material i'm going to delete the texture coordinates click save and now let's quickly see what that looks like okay well now that is super super big as you can see, it's trying to stretch the material across the entire surface over there. So how do we fix this? Well, if you click on your brush, you'll see that there's options over here for UV scaling. Now, essentially what this does is, as you can see, 19 by 6. Now, the meet, it's six me, uh, 19 meters wide and 6 meters tall. If you type it in like that, then if, essentially it means that it's going to fill the entire gap. And actually, if we let's let's do something, let's let's half it and go uh, not 19, 9.5 and 3. We click apply. And then you'll start to see the changes. So now it pretty much just depends really on uh, what you want to do. I think I want this to lap three times over there. So I'm going to change that to 1.5. Actually, let's change it to 2 and then C. Okay, that looks okay. And then let's change that to 6. Uh, let's try 5. Okay, so you just keep on going. I think uh, 4 and 2, there we go, so that we minimize our stretching. Now, we can also do it with this one. So let's go and 2. Four and two, four and two. All right, but uh, one thing to bear in mind that when you apply to a BSP brush, it will only apply to the side that you drag the material on, not the entire brush itself. Whereas with a static mesh, it applies it to the entire brush itself. So it all really depends on how you want. Um, your level to look what you want to do it with static meshes might actually work a little bit better later on but because we wanted to use the uh, box brush uh, or not sorry not the box brush but the subtract brush over here to create like our window areas uh, in a fairly easy way the bsp brush worked significantly better for our purposes over here but if you're going to create smaller walls I mean, you can still go with this one over here, just duplicate your material and put the texture coordinates back the way it was, and then everything should be fine. But essentially, I think what I'm going to do at the end is I'm going to use a completely different material for this wall than what I'm going to use for this wall. Because this is like an outer wall, and this is just like walls on the inside. So you kind of want to give them a, a different look because they probably were constructed uh, at, at a different point if you think about uh, the, the construction of the building itself but let's not get into that too much okay so this was just a quick wrap up to make sure that you guys uh, understood where we went with our final version of our um, window setup and how we just like fixed everything and gave you an option to create like a, a, a separate window. Uh, what I am going to do is I think eventually I'm going to replace this one single window plane that we created and I'm going to create separate models with windows attached to them. And it also gives you a little bit of flexibility because what you can do is let's say for instance later in your game you want to create broken windows. So you can go into Blender 
and you can like try and crack these windows just using like a different method and then if you import it back into Unreal Engine 4 you will have broken windows and everything so just a, a little bit more flexibility for if you are thinking a little bit ahead if instead of making a level and you want to create like a full-on game and you want to swap around art assets and things like that okay so with uh, all that rambling done that brings us to the end of this tutorial so if you like what you saw leave a like if you didn't you can leave a dislike please subscribe and i will see all of you in the next video